blood supply of cerebrum. So cerebrum is supplied by the three cerebral arteries. Middle cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery. Posterior cerebral artery is a branch of basilar artery, anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, terminal branch of internal carotid. Now, the, this is the lateral view of the cerebrum. So, the majority of the lateral surface of the cerebrum is supplied by which artery? This blue color, that is our middle cerebral artery. So, middle cerebral artery supplies the majority of the lateral surface of cerebrum. We have exception. What are those? Except the frontal pole. Except the supramedial margin of the frontal gyrus and the parietal lobe. Now, the frontal pole, the supramedial margin of the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe is supplied by anterior cerebral artery. Okay. And the inferior part of temporal lobe and the visual cortex is supplied by posterior cerebral artery. So, except these two areas, the remaining area in the lateral part of cerebrum is supplied by middle cerebral artery. So, specifically, I am going to mark two areas. Already we know this. Now, this is A and this is B. What is A and B? A is the Broca's area. Very good. And B is our vertex area. So, vertex area and Broca's area are supplied by middle cerebral artery. Vertex aphasia and the Broca's aphasia due to involvement of middle cerebral artery. Okay. Right. Next, the anterior cerebral artery. The anterior cerebral artery. Just now I told you, anterior cerebral artery supplies the frontal pole, the supramedial margin of the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. And this is the medial view of the cerebrum. The majority of the medial part of the cerebrum plus anterior four fifth of the corpus callosum. These are the areas supplied by anterior cerebral artery. So, anterior cerebral artery, it is the main artery supplying the medial part of the cerebrum. The medial surface of the cerebrum is mainly supplied by anterior cerebral artery. And this anterior cerebral artery also supplies frontal pole, the supramedial margin of the frontal lobe, parietal lobe and the major part of corpus callosum, anterior four fifth of the corpus callosum. Okay. Right. Now, one more artery is pending, our posterior cerebral artery. The posterior cerebral artery, yes, we divide into two segments, P1 segment and P2 segment. The P1 segment of the posterior cerebral artery, which give a branch to midbrain, thalamus and the subthalamus. P2 segment, which supplies the inframedial part of the temporal lobe and the occipital lobe. So, posterior cerebral artery is the main artery to supply the visual cortex, midbrain and thalamus. Okay. Right. So, these are the areas supplied by the anterior cerebral, middle cerebral and the posterior cerebral artery. So, one last applied. So, now our aneurysm of anterior and posterior communicating arteries. Okay. So, now this is our anterior communicating artery. So, that is our anterior communicating artery. Now, this is our anterior cerebral artery. Now, this is our middle cerebral artery. So, see the diagram. Now, this is our posterior cerebral artery and this is our superior cerebellar artery. Now, third nerve and fourth nerve. Fourth nerve is not marked here. Fourth nerve also. So, this is third nerve. So, this is a third nerve and this is fourth nerve. Okay. So, oculomotor nerve and the trochlear nerve, they pass between posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. Superior cerebellar artery. Okay. So, third nerve, oculomotor nerve and trochlear nerve, they pass between posterior cerebral artery and the superior cerebellar artery. And the third nerve is very close to posterior communicating artery. So, oculomotor nerve, that is the third nerve, very close to posterior communicating artery. Similarly, close to anterior communicating artery, 
we have optic chiasma. So, in the case of aneurysm of posterior communicating artery, which structure is compressed? Oculomotor nerve is compressed. In the case of aneurysm of anterior communicating artery, which structure is compressed? Optic chiasma is compressed. Very good. So, please underline. So, please write. So, in the case of aneurysms of in the case of aneurysm of posterior communicating artery, oculomotor nerve is compressed. Oculomotor nerve is compressed. In the case of aneurysm of anterior communicating artery, optic chiasma is compressed. Optic chiasma is compressed. Okay, right. So these are very important. Now this question they gave you in 2022 NEET exam. So aneurysm of anterior communicating artery, optic chiasma is compressed. Aneurysm of posterior communicating artery, oculomotor nerve is compressed. Okay. Now we're going to see some animations for the blood supply of brain. So brain is supplied by carotido basilar system. Basilar artery is coming from vertebral artery. Vertebral artery is a branch of the subclavian artery. Okay. Now subclavian artery, yes, is giving the vertebral artery. The vertebral artery is passing through foramen transversarium of C6 vertebra to C1 vertebra. Now see the foramen transversarium of C7 vertebra. It is not transmitting the vertebral artery. So vertebral artery, it is entering the foramen transversarium of C6 up to C1. Okay. Now this is the occipit bone. Now below the occipit bone, we have a triangle. The triangle is called suboccipital triangle. Below the occipit bone, we have a triangle. Boundaries, rectus capitus posterior major and then oblique capitus superior, oblique capitus inferior. Now between this, we have a triangle, suboccipital triangle. The third part of vertebral artery is a content of this triangle. Then the vertebral artery of two sides, they passes through foramen magnum and we zoom this area. Now the two vertebral arteries, yes, they enter the foramen magnum and they join, they form basilar artery and the basilar artery is giving the two terminal branch, posterior cerebral arteries. Now we see some more branches, specific branch. This one is posterior inferior cerebellar artery branch of vertebral artery. Okay. Now that is anterior inferior cerebellar artery branch of basilar artery and we are seeing numerous spontane branches from basilar artery. Okay. Now these are the branches you have to remember. Next, we are going to see the internal artery. artery. The internal artery, artery giving two terminal branch, anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery. We are seeing one more branch, posterior communicating artery, branch of internal carotid. Now, the two anterior cerebral connected by anterior communicating artery. So, middle cerebral artery not involved in the circle of illness. Now, two more branches, the intracerebral part of internal carotid gives. Now, see this bone. This is the lesser wing of spinoid. Now, in the lesser wing of spinoid, you are seeing this opening. That opening is our optic canal. Now, optic canal transmit ophthalmic artery, branch of intracerebral part of internal carotid. Now, we have one more branch, anterior choroidal artery. So, again, branch of intracerebral part of internal carotid. So, intracerebral part of internal carotid give five branches. What are those? Number one, middle cerebral artery. Number two, anterior choroidal artery. Number three, posterior communicating artery. Number four, ophthalmic artery. And number five, our anterior cerebral artery. So, these five branches coming from intracerebral part of internal carotid. So, that's all about the animations about the blood supply of brain.